You dive beneath the sea, burst onto a sunlit island, and then rise across Scandinavia's longest bridge. Welcome to the Orisund Link, part tunnel, part bridge, an all-engineering spectacle. A 16km engineering marvel combining a 7.8km bridge and a 4km tunnel, and a man-made island that connects them. Completed in 2000 at the cost of around 2.6 billion euros, it isn't just a road connecting two places. This incredible structure has reshaped economies, unified communities, and revolutionized transportation across Scandinavia. But why did engineers choose to complicate the connection by adding both a bridge and a tunnel? Why not just pick one or the other? Turns out, trying to please planes, ships, and ecosystems all at once forced one of the most unusual infrastructure compromises in modern history. In this video, we dig into the surprising reason and the high-stakes dilemma that forced engineers to rethink everything. For most of the 20th century, Urusund ferries hustled between Copenhagen and Malmo every 20 minutes, yet commuters still lost hours each week boarding and disembarking. Traffic tallies from 1990 showed the routes already handling 8.3 million passengers annually, and lorry movements were rising at 8% a year. The dream of a fixed link resurfaced every decade, only to drown in politics, funding squabbles, or wartime uncertainty. By the late 1980s, two pressures became impossible to ignore. Copenhagen Airport was exploding into Scandinavia's busiest hub, and Sweden's move towards European community membership raised demand for seamless road and rail corridors to Germany. Feasibility studies predicted that a permanent crossing could lift regional GDP by 3% within a decade. In March 1991, after seven months of tense diplomacy, Danish and Swedish lawmakers ratified an Urusund agreement. A treaty that created a jointly owned company that borrowed on world markets and repay construction loans through tolls. Coordinating finance, engineering codes, and regulatory standards between two nations wasn't just rare, it was revolutionary. Yet one giant obstacle remained. The most direct route towards Copenhagen sliced straight under the flight path of Kastrup's main runway, while shipping authorities insisted that the busy Drogden Channel stay wide open. Transport planners suddenly realized that no single structure could satisfy aviation, maritime, and economic demands at once. Engineers needed a bold two-part answer, or the grand project would stall forever. Jetliners descending towards Kastrup fly so low that even a tall lamppost could pose a risk. Early sketches of the Orisund crossing showed a high suspension bridge swinging straight onto Amaga Island, but Danish aviation officials drew a red line. Any structure above 20 meters in the flight corridor risked turbulence, radar reflection, and catastrophe. So engineers flipped the script. They buried the first four kilometers inside the Drogden Tunnel. Four parallel tubes, two for motorway traffic, two for trains, plus an emergency gallery, were cast on shore, floated out, then lowered into a dredged trench, while 747s thundered overhead. Crews pumped water from between segments, welded joints, and backfilled the trench, sealing the tube like a zipper under the seabed. Working beside an international airport created thriller-level constraints. Barge cranes could hoist only during nighttime windows cleared with air traffic control. Bad weather snowballed costs. Every extra day on site burned a million Danish kroner. Still, the tunnel opened three months early. Aviation auditors later confirmed the choice sliced runway incursion risk by 98% compared with an all-bridge plan. When trains burst back into daylight, travelers glimpse Pemberholm, a man-made island that marks the handoff from tunnel to bridge. That clever sandbank frees shipping lanes, protects wildlife, and sets the stage for the next act. It's now studied worldwide as a masterclass in designing around aviation limits. Urban planners and ecologists alike point to Pemberholm as proof that infrastructure and wild nature don't have to be enemies. Orisund is no sleepy backwater. The narrow Drogden Channel carries about 35,000 commercial vessels every year including Baltic cruise liners and oil tankers. With air droughts topping 40 meters, the bridge offers 57 meters of headroom, yet captains prefer the deeper fairway closer to Denmark. A full bridge at that spot would have blocked their route and sent ships hundreds of kilometers around the Great Belt. Pairing a tunnel with an island solved two maritime headaches. First, the tube dives under Drogden without stealing a millimeter from its 8-meter drought or 300-meter width. Second, open water above the tunnel lets Baltic currents sweep floating ice out of the sound each winter, preventing the jams that once paralyzed ferries. The gentle climb from the tunnel floor to the bridge deck on Bemberholm even delivers an ideal gradient for 200 km per hour trains. 
Maritime safety adds live choreography. Any vessel with an air draft above 35 meters must call sound VTS, which alerts Copenhagen Tower so that masts and Airbus wings never compete for the same altitude. The hybrid link works like a moving puzzle where rail dispatchers, pilots, and harbour masters coordinate minute by minute. Had planners ignored seafaring advice, Denmark would have faced dredging bills nearing half a billion euros to cut a deeper approach. Litigation from fishing cooperatives would likely have dragged on for years. The tunnel choice saved money, time, and political goodwill. Now let's step onto Pemberholm, where strict no-entry rules turned a pile of sand into Scandinavia's most surprising nature reserve. Pemberholm did not exist 25 years ago. Engineers dredged 11 million cubic meters of seabed, stacking the spoil until a three-kilometer island stood four meters above sea level. Its sole job was to let the tunnel rise and the bridge begin without pylons intruding into flight paths or shipping lanes. Then nature took over. Because public access is barred, except for quarterly scientific surveys, seeds carried by wind, waves, and birds colonized untouched sand. A 2023 botanical census counted more than 810 vascular plant species, astonishing for a site smaller than New York's Central Park. Original blueprints tied the bridge to Denmark's island of Soltholm, but environmental regulators flagged its Ramsarbird sanctuary. Creating Pemberholm instead protected eel grass beds and satisfied the EU birds directive. The island doubles as critical infrastructure. Its concrete abutment holds pumps that can drain the tunnel fast during an emergency, and service roads under the motorway let fire trucks reach any point. Pemberholm has even earned UNESCO praise as a living laboratory of wild ecology. With the midpoint secured, builders still needed a structure that could shrug off Baltic storms while hauling trains in rush hour traffic. From Pemberholm, the link rises into a cable-stayed bridge stretching 7.8 kilometers towards Sweden. Twin pylons soar 204 meters, taller than any Danish skyscraper. 82,000 tons of steel carry four motorway lanes, plus twin rail tracks suspended by 25 kilometers of cable. Wind tunnel tests prove the deck stays stable in 54 meters per second gusts. Construction kicked off in 1995, employing 9,000 workers across three prime contracts. Divers discovered 16 unexploded World War II mines on the seabed, and one tunnel segment skewed offline. Yet the project finished three months early. The final bill hit 19.6 billion Danish krona, about 2.6 billion euros or 2.8 billion US dollars in 2000 prices. Financing broke the mold. Denmark and Sweden formed Orensens Bro Consortiet, a company that borrowed on international markets. Tolls and rail fees repay the loans, not taxpayers. In the first quarter of 2025, the consortium posted a 331 million krona profit with nearly 6,000 daily commuter trips, up 12% year on year. At this pace, the debt will vanish in the early 2030s, nearly a decade ahead of schedule. The bridge also carries fiber optic lines that serve as the region's digital backbone today. When the toll booths opened on the 1st of July 2000, skeptics predicted that 9,000 vehicles a day would be the absolute ceiling. Fast forward to 2024, and the link carries 18,400 road vehicles and about 60,000 train passengers every single day. The human river now runs both ways. Danes stream east for cheaper flats, Swedes flow west for better salaries. Even property markets felt the shock wave. Malmo apartment prices jumped 40% within five years as the motorway rail deck turned the sound into one extended city street. Economists say the Orisund area's GDP now grows one percentage point faster each year than comparable Nordic regions. Cross-border marriages have doubled, and language schools market compact Danse Svenska courses that blend both tongues. Officials increasingly speak of a single Greater Copenhagen labor pool where a job in Lund feels as close as a job in Lingby. Yet frictions remain. A one-way car toll typically costs 455 krona, around 61 euros, though frequent users get steep discounts. Climate groups call for lower fees on electric cars, extra rail capacity, and protected bike corridors. The consortium has responded by installing 3,000 square meters of solar panels on Pemberholm and pledges to triple that area by 2026, enough to cover half the link's own power demand. Now, as traffic soars, planners are asking, should the Orisund link get a northern cousin? A Danish-Swedish pre-study released in 2021 outlined two options for the HH tunnel between Helsinger and Helsingborg. The leanest is an 11-kilometer road tube that could open in the late 2030s for about 21 billion Swedish krona. A bolder twin bore for both road and rail 
would cost 57 billion krona, roughly 5.4 billion US dollars, and dive 41 meters under the seabed. Supporters warn that by 2030, the Orison Bridge could hit its practical limit of 16 trains per hour. At peak times, up to 12 trains per hour already crossed the link, leaving little room for future growth. While Danish ministers remain wary of extra freight traffic rolling through North Zealand, designed to last a century with routine maintenance, the Orison Link may serve generations yet unborn. By solving aviation, shipping, and ecological puzzles in one layout, Denmark and Sweden prove that seemingly incompatible demands can coexist. Next time you glide from Copenhagen to Malmö, think of the tunnel under your wheels, the island alive with wild orchids, and the wind humming through 82,000 tons of steel. Its lessons now guide the Fehman Belt Tunnel and other corridors, rewriting playbooks for coastal nations worldwide, hungry for greener, faster, and safer links. Ever cross the Orson Bridge yourself? We'd love to hear your experience in the comments. And while you're here, hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating stories from around the globe.